We're filming this pretty early in the morning and it is the day after we got back from the Lee Valley Athletic Centre where we filmed those amazing Salomon athletes take on Phantasm 24. Uh, we had a 700 mile round trip. We were up for 24 hours plus, hence the bags under my eyes, but we had a fantastic time up there. I'm pretty sure we captured some great content, so there'll be a video on the channel very soon. But I've been really excited since I picked these bad boys up to take them out for their first outing. So that is exactly what we're doing today. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So today is the day when we take the brand new Ultra Mont Blanc Elite out for its first run on the Cornish Coast Path. But before we do that, let's give you guys a few facts and figures, a bit of info about the construction of this very much hyped trail running shoe. Firstly, they cost me a whopping £165, so not a cheap trail running shoe. So fingers crossed they run well. If you don't know a lot about the Ultra brand, they make road and trail shoes but they're best known for their trail running shoes especially in the US where they have a massive following they make their shoes on a zero drop so there's no heel offset so we've got a 30 mil stack under the forefoot and under the heel you can see that their shoes are quite uh, quite different in shape and profile so we've got this nice wide platform and we've got this nice wide toe box width, so perfect for wiggle room, perfect if you've got a bit of width to your foot, but also great when you're running long distance because it allows you that space for a bit of foot expansion. It weighs in at 289 grams in a men's UK 9.5. And Ultra are also going to be producing a boa closure version of this shoe. That's going to be releasing later in the year, and I think that's going to be even more expensive at around 180 pounds. The Mont Blanc Elite is been designed for racing over long distances on tough challenging technical terrain so races like sort of UTMB hence the Mont Blanc name of the shoe uh, as you can imagine where it's been designed for ultra running it has quite a deep level of cushioning in that midsole and ultra have chosen to go for their ergo max cushioning this time round giving you that nice comfortable and responsive feel underfoot there's no rock plate worked into that midsole, but with the depth of cushioning of 30 mil under your forefoot, it should still offer good levels of protection on rocky trail. The outsole of the shoe is pretty interesting because we've got some incredible rubber compound on there. So it is Vibram's Mega Grip Light Base. So not their standard Mega Grip, this is their latest and lightest version of that rubber. Should still be super sticky, but it's keeping that weight down to a minimum. Uh, obviously it's a trail running shoe, so We've got some lugs on the shoe there, if you can see them. Not the deepest lugs in the world. They look to be around three mil. So uh, it's gonna be muddy out on today's run. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that outsole performs. Moving up to the upper, and because this has been designed for sort of racing over long distances, the upper is pretty stripped back in construction. So we've got a, a quite thin gusseted tongue in the shoe. Glad to see the Ultra have worked some padding down the center of that tongue. So it should still be pretty comfortable across the top of the foot. We've got two different types of fabric used in the upper. So we've got this very sort of soft to touch plush fabric that wraps around the toe box. And then we've got this slightly sort of coarser, harsher material that's pretty much transparent from the midfoot working and wrapping around the heel. It looks very similar in construction to the sort of matrix fabric that's used in some of the Salomon and the North Face shoes that we've reviewed on the channel. There's not a lot of structure or padding in the heel and ankle cup either. So the back end of the shoe is all pretty soft. So we've just got these little sort of zones of padding internally in that heel. You've got a nice handy heel tab and you get uh, Ultra's sort of gator attachment system. I've been itching to take these out for a run, but I really wanted to bring you guys with us. So I had to wait until we got back from Phantasm 24. We are heading up to the North Cliffs today, so we should get some stunning views. And you never know, we might have some company out there as well. So let's get running. Right, 
right, we've made it out onto the trail somewhere a bit different today. So parked up at Tahiti Woods, but we're coming out onto the north coast of Cornwall, down to Bassett, and then we're gonna run along a section of a pretty challenging coast path. Got a few dips, few climbs, few technical descents. We're bound to find some mud. And like I said, a bit of company today. So Hooray. Steve Wyatt is back on the channel, uh, AKA the pirate. If you're new to the channel, you're not sure who Steve is, go and check out our pirate film that we made of him running the Arc Patrician. Um, and it will show you the kind of caliber of runner he is. So hopefully he's gonna go steady with me today. I said, let's have a nice catch up run and take it easy. But you know, he said we're gonna do that, but I've, I've been tricked by that before in the past. So yeah, hopefully a nice steady run, sort of nine miles in distance, perfect for the first outing in a new shoe. And we should have a lot of different types of terrain to deal with, rocky, dry, muddy a bit of everything on today's run so let's get out there let's see how we do so you can see an incredible place to come and run. Look at the views behind me. Does it get any better than that? Incredible. But it is challenging. So lots of steep short climbs and you can see lots of technical descents. Woo! The legs and lungs are definitely pumping. It's been a long time since I've been out here running. So yeah, great to be back. It's a bit blustery out here today, but you can see there we're dropping down into Portreath and then we're going up that sodding great hill the other side, Lighthouse Hill. It never gets any easier running up there. One of the last big hills in the Arc of Attrition and it really is soul destroying when you, when you see that in the distance. But obviously we're all right, we've only got two miles in the legs so I'm sure we'll get up here pretty easy. But yeah, more stunning views on the route. So far so good in the shoe. Feels very comfortable underfoot. Not sure about the depth of the heel cup. Feels quite a shallow shoe, so not sure how well it's holding my heel. Good lock down the midfoot and the upper feels very comfortable, but yeah, the jury's out on a heel lockdown so far, but early days, we'll see how we get on. We have made it to the top of the infamous Lighthouse Hill. And me and Steve were just saying, we're running the TDS uh, later this year in August. This climb's about a thousand meters, Steve, what do you reckon? Oh, a thousand? A thousand? A hundred meters. Probably a hundred. Yeah, and there's a climb in UTMB that is 2,000 meters. So all we'd have to do is rep that 20 times and we'd have it done. But uh, I don't think I'll be running up the one in TDS. How you feeling, mate? Good, yeah, really good. Nice to be on a Sunday. Oh, I'll introduce you to the doggos. So this is Woody. Woody is a bit like uh, its owner, a little bit unhinged and a little bit crazy. Yeah. Whereas Braxton, this is Braxton, hello Brax. Braxton's a far more sensible dog, but Woody can be a little bit of a liability. But he's lovely, obviously. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, come on, let's get running. Right, we got what? Just over three miles done. About a mile and a half to the turning point. Then we're heading home. We have dropped down into the second Big Dipper, or the guys in Cornwall like to call them the bitches. Uh, so we're for, through poor Treef. And now this is what's ahead of us. It doesn't look that steep on camera, to be honest, but it is, believe me, it's very steep. Big old steps, proper quad burners, and Steve runs off into the distance. I think I might walk this one. I think I'll keep talking to you guys. It's a good excuse to walk the hills and not have to run them. But yeah, mega man. We come out here whenever, you know, we've got a hilly race coming up or if we're going away to say UTMB, a mountainous race, a great place to build some quad strength. We'll come out here and we'll rep these hills several times. It is a super challenging session, but well worth it and 
it's all we've got. That's all we can do in the UK to prepare ourselves for these big mountain races. But, oh, what a amazing view when you get to the top. Woo. Right, I'll stop talking and get my breath back. Seeking shelter, it might be a bit echoey, but it is proper blustery out there. We are five miles into the run, so we've got a bit further, Steve. I thought you said it was four and a half. Uh, yeah, five miles in, we've had some good climbs in them five miles as well, so the old quads are definitely feeling it. But shoe wise, feeling very comfortable underfoot, really liking that Ergo Max cushioning. It's soft, but not too squishy soft, so you still feel nice and connected, and we've been running on some pretty technical stuff. When it comes to the outsole, Vibra Mega Grip Light Base, super sticky on the rocks and the wet rocks. I've even run some mud in the shoe, not super boggy much, but um, a little bit of mud along the way, and those three meal lugs actually work pretty well, so it's been pretty grippy in the wet, muddy stuff as well. So, so far so, so good, we've reached the turning point, so, the only thing we've got to do now is five miles back to the car and we've got to run all those dips again. So let's get going. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know you've been practicing yoga, Steve. <laughs> So I was waiting for you to fall in. <laughs> Gotta be there to capture the moment, you know? Cheers, mate. Well oh, just shy of 10 miles, so really positive run. Lots of gain as well, lots of technical ups and technical downs. So really good to be back out of this section of the coast path. Right, we are all done. Um, pretty chilly out there at the moment, so wrapping up a bit. But yeah, great to catch up with Steve and the dogs. Always nice to run with a bit of company, especially on a challenging run like it was today. Lots of positives to go through when it comes to the new trail shoe from Ultra. But we're gonna get home, have a shower, definitely have something to eat, because I am absolutely starving. And then we're gonna give you guys a few more details on how the shoe performed. So somewhere a bit different on today's first impressions video. And I think it was a really good route for the first run in the Ultra shoes. So we got just under 10 miles straight out of the box. And I've got to say it, the shoe felt comfortable, my feet felt comfortable, and that's always a positive thing when you take a shoe straight out of the box and it feels good on your feet. I would have had no issues with going further on that run today as well. So super positive on that front. Uh, sizing, I would say it's true to size. This is a UK 9.5, fit in my foot shape really well. And obviously we've got that sort of wide foot shape design that you get with an Ultra shoe. I would say maybe not as wide as some of the models um, from Ultra, but still really good wiggle room and good space in that toe box. The upper felt nice and light, wrapped around my foot and super breathable. I'm really glad that Ultra put that little bit of padding down the center of that tongue because I think without it, I might have had an issue with the laces across the top of my foot. With that padding, works really well. So all in all, just a really nice place 
place to be. I talked about it out on the run and I think the ultra shoe gives you that nice level of cushioning. So you feel nice and comfortable, but you still feel connected to the trails underfoot. And this is something that I've felt in a lot of the ultra shoes that I've tested at the channel. So soft when you pick up the firmer sections of trail, the sections of tarmac, but then when you hit some more technical trails, like I said, you don't have any issues with stability. And, and that's pretty impressive when you think of the depth of midsole you've got under your foot. So there was a couple of times out on the run where we had to run some pretty steep and pretty technical descents. And again, in deep midsole shoes before, I have had issues in areas like that, but no issues to speak of today in the ultra shoe. Grip wise, well, it is Vibram Mega Grip rubber and, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you've run in a trail shoe with Vibram Mega Grip on the outsole. It is a brilliantly sticky rubber compound, especially in rocky areas or even better, wet rocky areas. And this new light-based Mega Grip is no different. It was great out on today's run. I never doubted my foot in when it came to grip on rock or wet rock. Uh, when it comes to the lug depth, I was a little bit dubious about it. It looks to be around a three mil lug depth and I wasn't convinced that was gonna grip me in any kind of mud, but we did have some sections of mud out there today and the outsole actually handled it really well. Um, I was really surprised and don't get me wrong, it wasn't any super deep boggy mud, but there was some muddy sections. And I think the shoe still would really struggle, say in the depth of winter in a really, on a really muddy trail. I think you'd slip and slide all over the place. But for the mud we had out on today's run, it was more than adequate. All in all, I actually enjoyed the first outing in the Ultra Trail shoe, but there was just a few issues out there on the run as well. One of them I spoke about on the run, and that was sort of heel lockdown or slippage going on in the shoe. Uh, I did actually stop mid run and adjust the laces, and it did improve it a little bit, but I think there was still some movement going on. If I'm honest, I've never been a big fan of shoes that don't have a, a sort of heel counter or structure around the back end. And this is one of them, it's very, very soft. And I have had issues with lift and movement in similar sort of design shoes. Obviously, I understand everybody's foot shape is different and some people might not have this issue with this heel cup, but I just think it would have locked me and held me in the back end of the shoe a bit better with a bit of a heel counter in there. Obviously, this is just the first run, so we're gonna play around with the lacing system over the next couple of weeks, and hopefully we can make some improvements. The only other thing I'd mention is that 165 pounds, it is an expensive trail shoe, and I'm just not sure how versatile it'd be here in the UK with that shallow lug depth on the outsole. For me, it would definitely be a shoe that I saw sort of put away at winter and then bring it out again in the drier months. And you know, 165 pounds for a trail shoe that you can't run all year round is pretty expensive. Obviously, we're going to be putting a lot more miles into the shoe over the coming weeks. I'm definitely going to seek out some proper muddy, boggy trails so we can test the traction of that outsole thoroughly. And then we'll be back with a full in-depth review. Really hope I can sort of resolve those heel lockdown issues in the upper because I think if I can, I can see myself spending a lot of time in the Mont Blanc Elite out on the trails in the drier months. So there you have it, our first impressions on Outra's latest trail offering. Really hope you enjoyed the video, really hope you found it helpful. Also, I hope you enjoyed seeing another one of my training grounds and it was great having the pirate back on the channel again. Uh, if you've got a pair of the uh, Mont Blanc Elites yourself and you've been putting some good miles in them, let us know all about how the shoe is performing in the comments below. Just before we go, I wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody that has uh, reached out to us since we announced that we're going full time at the channel. Your comments, your emails, your messages have all been amazing. So positive, so supportive, and it really is appreciated, guys. It really is. So uh, if you've enjoyed the video, if you're enjoying the channel, you know what to do, guys. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but don't forget to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload any new running content. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. As you can see, your lovely shoes, wearing the odd laces, a little bit of mud, Vent extra ventilation. Thanks for filming my shoes. <laughs> Sack the camera, man. <laughs>